Canon 17 to 40 is a bit older lens, introduced back in 2003 and was replaced by 16 to 35 IS in 2014. But even today in 2018 there are a lot of them available for purchase brand new, let alone thousands being sold second hand. Let's see how it performs and does it make sense to get one. Being an L grade lens, build quality is quite good. It is made from good quality plastic and has rubber zoom and focus ring. It weighs around 500 grams, what is not much for a full frame wide angle zoom. Lens is weather sealed, but for maximum effect, Canon recommends using a front protective filter. When talking about filters, 17 to 40 accepts those with 77 mm diameter. They are common, but can be a bit pricey. Lens mount is from metal and there is a special slot intended to use gel filters. Zoom action is internal. This lens keeps constant size but you can still see front element moving front and back inside the lens barrel. Autofocus speed is very fast as is the case with all USM lenses. Lens hood is part of the package but is huge in size. I lost it at one point and never bothered to buy another one. Instead, you are better off with a hood that comes with 24 to 105 lens. It can be used without issues on APS-C sensor, but shows in the corners on full frame. Some users have filed a bit of plastic on the side petals and after that there were no issues even on full frame. This is field of view you get on full frame. And this is on APS-C sensor. Center of the frame is really good already at f4. It gets even a bit sharper as you stop down, but that is not needed for center performance. On crop sensor, similar story. Center of the frame is quite good at all apertures. How about corners? Oh boy! At wide angle this lens looks depressing. It gets a bit better as you zoom in, so after 24mm a bit of sharpness appears, but still corners never reach excellent center of the frame results. How about crop sensor corners? Nope. Below f8 they are bad. It is better than full frame corners, but still this is only just average. Corner performance is one of the main complaints most users have about this lens and now you see why. At wide angle focus shift does not exist. At 40mm there is some around f8 and a bit at f11. This is visible at close focusing distances only. At longer subject distances it does not show up, so there is nothing to worry about. Focus breathing is present. No surprise for a lens designed in a time when recording video on a DSLR was just a fantasy. 17-40 is not parfocal, but is not far from it either. At short subject distances and f4 you can clearly see focus plane shifting a bit. If set on at least f8 and infinity focus, depth of field will compensate and it will be possible to use zoom during video without fear it will go out of focus. Lateral chromatic aberrations are present mostly on wide part of the zoom range. They respond well to post-process removal tools so I never worry about them. Longitudinal aberrations are visible wide open at any zoom position. They are not overly strong, clean up nicely at 5.6 and disappear by f8. Full frame geometry is not ideal, but I've seen worse. Barrel distortion is pretty obvious on 17mm. It becomes better and better as we zoom in and from 28 to 40mm it is basically gone. On crop sensor results are better as only central part of the lens is used. I don't think anyone will buy 17-40 with astrophotography in mind. 
Koma is really funky with this lens, especially on full frame. Crop sensor corners are a bit better, but still there are far better lenses for wide field astrophotography. If you plan to shoot just a few images per year, it will be usable though. Light fall off is a bit of an issue on full frame. At pretty much any position in the zoom range, lens shows significant vignetting at f4. 5.6 is better, but it should be stopped down to f8 in order to remove most of it and even down to f11 to get rid of it completely. On crop sensor, vignetting is basically invisible. Flare resistance is extremely good, especially at wide angle. Some tiny artifacts can appear when you close it down to f16 or 22, but otherwise this is a lens you can point at the sun and fire away without worries. Perfect for landscape shots with the sun in the frame. Being a wide-angle f4 lens, bokeh is not a first thing on list of desired features. Still, 17 to 40 holds up rather well. Even with problematic background, bokeh is usable. Autofocus highlights are a bit disappointing on wide angle, but look much better at 40 mm. With 28 cm closest focusing distance and 0.24 times magnification, this lens can be used for solid close-ups, especially on a crop sensor. In real life something like this can be expected. I would say this is quite solid for a full-frame wide-angle lens. Starburst is solid, but not the nicest possible. Altogether, this lens is a bit of a mixed bag. Most of the criticism towards it concerns corner performance. Sharpness and vignetting are ugly. It has visible geometric distortions on wide angle and suffers from coma. But at the same time, center sharpness is really good, doesn't suffer from focus shift, has usable close focusing capabilities and one of the best flare resistances in the Canon system. Build quality is superb, focus is fast and accurate and the lens is not expensive, especially on second-hand market. I have it for 2 or 3 years now and was tempted more than a few times to upgrade and get the new 16-35 IS. That one is regarded as one of the finest wide-angle lenses Canon ever made. Still, I never did it. Why? Since I usually don't pixel peep corners and shoot mostly at f8 or above, I am actually quite satisfied. Every time I get back home and view images there is actually nothing wrong with them. In fact, I am quite impressed by real life results. There will always be a newer and better lens and since I don't have infinite bank account balance, this one will stay on my camera for quite some time more. If you are not concerned about absolute image quality, 17 to 40 is still a very good choice for full frame ultra wide zoom lens. It could work out for APS-C users also, but I think there are better options. Canon has EFS 17-55 f2.8 IS and there is a very good and inexpensive Tamron 17-50 f2.8. Finally, the best choice might be Sigma 18-35 f1.8. That's all for this review. Press like, subscribe, check affiliate links in the description and thanks for watching.